Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Northside United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Tony Harder. It's good to see everyone on Memorial Day weekend. Um, pretty good crowd for a holiday weekend. Y'all did well. So good to see everybody here. And it's, uh, it's wonderful to have some friends that join us on Facebook Live and uh, YouTube as well. <clears throat> we'll start with a couple of uh, announcements. Um, just let you know, on Monday we had a really good uh, time giving away books as an end of the summer or end of the school year uh, event with uh, the with the students at Summit Drive Elementary. And I don't guess we really counted, but we had to give away over 100 books, I suppose. A lot of kids. So anyway, it was good. Appreciate several people that helped with that. I mean, Bill uh, Fabian was our uh, our muscle that day because. Some of us couldn't lift stuff, but Kevin was here, and Stephanie, and Hulda, and Lorraine, and Olin. So it was it was a good time with uh, with our neighbors across the street there. Uh, reading's kind of our theme this this summer. We will have our uh, our story time events starting on June sixth. That's a Thursday, <clears throat> every Thursday at ten, uh, starting in the social hall. We'll we'll have a, a children's event where they can come hear a story. Uh, do a craft, something creative, and then uh, share, share a little snack. So that starts on June 6th, and we're hopeful that that'll be uh, well-received in the neighborhood. So um, you can see that our uh, Wednesday night uh, fellowship will take back up on the 5th of June. So Jeff's cooking for us, I'm pretty sure, that day. So we're looking forward to that. Um, let's see, did you ever decide on a trustees thing okay so if the trustees could meet with clay uh here after church um got a couple of items that we need to take care of there if uh if you would and let's see i think that's all i have yes bill oh i'm sorry bill tries to remind me and i just ignore him sometimes so uh, we've got the yellow envelopes uh, in the pew to to help fund our backpack and other ministries. Um, so if you would make a donation uh, to the backpack ministry, we would appreciate that in the yellow envelope uh, there in the pew. Anyone else got an announcement? Well, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it, but it is Jessica's last day, so I have to give her a little bit of hard time about it, but it's the last Sunday we'll have her playing for us, uh, at least for the immediate future, but uh, we just, uh, we're grateful for you being here, and and uh, we'll have some prayer about you and your future later, but uh, if not, uh, if no other announcements, um, before we begin with our opening prayer, I want to ask Chloe if she would come down for just a minute, because we have a little gift for her. This is kind of our uh, our uh, senior Sunday, graduation, graduate Sunday. Can you turn this mic on, Jeff? Is it powered? It is now. There you go. Why don't you hold that? How's Chloe? I'm doing good. Good? School's yeah. out? Yep. When graduated did you graduate? May 22nd. Okay. Do I need to take Can you all hear me? You're fine. Yeah, they can hear you. So, you got exciting plans? Yeah, I'm going to uh, go to Greenwood Tech and uh, while I'm, like, enrolled for nursing. Oh, okay. And then I want to, like, it's they said it was easier to transfer, like, to if you wanted to transfer to, a, like, another one to get more. So, and I wanted to transfer to Clemson, but I'm going to start off at Greenville You're Tech. You're going to start at Greenville Tech? Yep. Okay. For nursing, this, so. I'm start excited. this fall? Or? Yep, this fall. Okay. What are you going to do in the meantime? Um, Work? Work and be with them. Be with them? Yeah. <laughs> Spend time. Huh? Yeah. Okay. All the time. Well, you've been uh, just such a wonderful blessing to our church. And, you know, we're, we're grateful that God sent you here to spend some time with us. Uh, we got you this uh, nice oh uh, study student Bible. It's, it's nice. Got lots of oh, notes yeah. in it. And that. got your name on there. I'm cry. Well, you don't need to do that. But, but uh, we just want you to know that that you're very special to us, and and we wish you the best. So, you're welcome. So, uh, so we're going to give you that, and I'm going to just pray with you, okay? Let's pray. 
Dear Lord, as uh, Chloe uh, strikes out on new adventures in her life, we pray your blessing on her, that, that you would be with her and keep her on a, on a path of love and success, and that uh, she would be a, she will be a wonderful nurse uh, or where, whatever profession she decides. But Lord, we thank you for her and, and her love and her service, her witness, her ministry, her worship here at Northside and wherever she goes. She is a shining light to everyone that she encounters, and we thank you for her. We love her, and uh, ask your blessing on her, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. God bless you, dear. Okay, now, let us open our worship in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, today um, we come with our hearts wide open to you. We, we seek the energy of the Holy Spirit. That, uh, that forms our lives and, in fact, gives us a different kind of life than those that don't know the Spirit, that don't have your power inside of them. Let our worship be filled with the Spirit today as we uh, express our love for you, love for one another, and, uh, and our hope for the world. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's open with hymn number 393, Spirit of the Living God. Let's sing this through two times standing together. now recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, 
O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Do we have prayer requests today? Uh, Hold up. Okay, so hold his daughter Libby had surgery on her foot. So, okay, so we'll uh, we'll be praying for Libby. Do I see another hand over this way? Yeah, Bill. Terrific. So, answered the uh, Praise for answered prayers for Reagan and a milestone uh, one year uh, in his treatment program that, uh, that he's uh, been doing well. So we continue to pray for Reagan and for your family. So but that's wonderful news, and thank you for sharing that with us, Bill. So we'll uh, pray for Reagan. Who else? We've got, uh, oh, go ahead, Katie. Someone you work with? Bagwell family. And it was her mother in law. Okay. So the Bagwell family for a for death in the family. So okay, yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, we we can offer some prayer on that. So, okay. So Clay's got. Uh, got some rosacea that uh, is affecting his eye I didn't know that could happen so uh, it's affecting his vision so Clay we pray we will be praying for you that that uh, that the medication does its job and you feel better soon thank you yeah Um, so Jessica and Josh are uh, taking a week away our daughter and her husband are taking a week away and uh, so we pray that they have a good safe trip and we have several traveling. We have uh, Lorraine and Olin, and I think Jerry and Charles are with them uh, traveling this weekend. So we pray for safe travel. Um, thank you for your prayers for me, and I am feeling better and stronger day by day. So people keep reminding me, though, I'm not young anymore, so it's supposed to take time. To, so that I need to slow down, so, but uh, anyway, so that's a struggle. Kevin, hopefully you're feeling better today uh, after his, uh, his, uh, well, that's awesome. Okay, so we praise and uh, pray for Kevin, and you know, it it is a special weekend, Memorial Day, that 
that holiday we set aside to think of all of those who gave so much that we can enjoy the the freedoms and benefits of living in America. Um, you know, this just the freedom that we shared, it doesn't happen. It has to be fought for, just as our faith has to be fought for. And there are, thank God, people that are willing to stand on the on the ramparts to watch over us. And so I'm just so grateful for people who have given their lives in service, who have literally given their lives that we can live the way that we are. And that's what, uh, that's what this day is for. So we pray for that. And of course we do pray for Jessica and, and James and whatever journey they'll be on after uh, Jessica's done playing here. But uh, we, uh, we will certainly be thinking of you and missing you but we pray you you uh your life goes well so anyone else all right let us pray Lord, so often we, we take life, we take liberty, we take love, we take so many things for granted. And we forget, Father, that, that um, there's a struggle going on in the world against difficult things, against evil things, against illness, against poverty, just against pain and all of us face those struggles. A meaningful life, Father, is so hard to come by on our own. Yes, we, we have our own responsibilities, but Father, we thank you for so many in our lives and in our nation who have given of themselves that we might be able to live the way that we choose to live. That we can be here in church this morning to worship free of concern that, that, uh, that a burdening government would close the doors and keep us away. Even though that's happened. But Lord, we're just thankful that we have the freedom to be here. We thank you for those who have given their lives in service. What a great and wonderful call that so many have taken up to defend us, to bless us. And Lord, there are those many, many saints throughout the years who have done the same with their lives, committed their lives to service to the church. Lord, we pray for our thanks for them as well. We pray, Father, that you would bring new people into our church to find this to be a place of service, a place of love, a place of worship. Be with us, O oh God. Lord, you have not left us alone. You sent Jesus to come and teach us what it means to be your people, what it means to know the power and love of Christ to live outside of the world even as we are in it but to live in a new way we thank you Lord Jesus for coming to save us for going to the cross even giving your life sacrificially to give it away in such a painful and horrible way that our sins would be removed that we would be cleansed that we would have the freedom to live a life that is fulfilling and a, and a blessed hope that there is eternal life and that all of the trials, all of the difficulties that we might face today will one day pass away as we enter into your presence in heaven. 
Dear God, we are so thankful. Bless your church, Father. Let us know and feel and hold on to the Holy Spirit's power, the Holy Spirit's love, the Holy Spirit's guidance. Revive us by the Spirit. Let there be a new flame of faith and energy to carry forth this great gospel of Jesus. Bless us, O God, here at Northside as we step forward in our journey along that path. We pray, O God, this morning for those who have needs, such as uh, Libby. We pray for healing for her. We offer our praise for answered prayers that Reagan is doing so well. Bless him to continue down a path of success and healing. We lift up the Bagwell family that they would... uh, that they would find comfort in this moment of grief. We ask that uh, Clay would find healing and that his vision would be cleared up and that, uh, that he would feel better soon. And Lord, we do offer our prayers for Jessica. So wonderful a witness and discipleship that she's practiced here with us for so many years. Thank you for the beautiful music. Let us... Uh, let us always be mindful to, to pray for her and, uh, and help her on her way in, in the future that you bring to her. Her discipleship and love have been a light to us all. Thank you, dear God, for, uh, for those things and, and for sharing her with us for this time. Lord, we, um, we offer these prayers today out of out of the love that we have for you, out of the devotion that we give to Jesus Christ. Let us do his, his work here at Northside to share his love throughout Greenville and the world. Be with us now, we pray. And we pray as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to ask the ushers now if they would come forward for our morning offering.
praise, honor, and glory be to you, Almighty God. You care for us. You love us. You have sent the Spirit to show us how to live. Today, Father, we offer our gratitude in the form of this offering. Use it, dear God, for your great purposes. We bring it out of love and the power of the Holy Spirit to move us and change us. Amen. You may be seated. That worked out. My batteries died as I got emotional, so I kind of had an excuse for you to not hear me, and that worked out really well. You may remain seated. Let us sing as the deer, hymn 2025, in your small black hymnal. I'm just going to sit there for a minute. <laughs> I had a note I didn't want to, thought I didn't want to lose, so. Did I throw you off really bad? By doing the prayer first? Or? Well, I dare say you've done that over the years. So. Let us pray. Holy God, as we hear your word today, Father, I pray that, uh, well, I pray my thanks, Father, that you allow me to, uh, to speak it, to uh, present it. Uh, I pray that I do it in a way that is true to your heart and that uh, would speak to our own, to the hearts of all gathered here and others that might hear it today. Use me, Father, as an instrument of your word. Let through the power, the encouragement, the truth, and the love of Christ might come through now as we study in Acts chapter 2 in Ezekiel. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, you get in kind of a kind of a rhythm when you preach and when you when you preach every Sunday and uh, not being able to do that last Sunday and uh, you know kind of kind of threw me off a little bit so we'll see what God uh, God has to tell us in these stories it's it's uh, I'm preaching out of Acts two which is really the story that we might have talked about last Sunday on Pentecost Sunday but uh, it was a sermon that I'd started on and I wanted to to just bring it to you today. So we'll talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit's coming at Pentecost. Um, we're studying out of Acts chapter 2, and uh, I'm just going to read the first four verses. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire, entire house where they were sitting Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pentecost Sunday is always important because it's, it, it's defined as the birth of the church, the church as we know it. 
if we look back through the Old Testament, through all of the rest of Scripture, we can see kind of the of an, of an early church, but it doesn't have the same personality. It doesn't have the same characteristics of the church uh, that that we know of today. Um, and this passage is, uh, and, and all of the Book of Acts is a is a model for us. Given the events of certainly the last few weeks uh, in our church, as in the United Methodist Church, we can recognize that the, the church is struggling with some things. The church is struggling with how to deal with a modern culture in the context of an ancient word of God that has, has endured for literally thousands of years. The church is struggling We get tired of hearing it, but church attendance is down. More people in the world today identify as either agnostic or outside of the church. They might feel the presence of God somehow, but but they don't choose to act on that feeling. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the church. Even if we look at our church and we look back at the history of our church, it's almost a microcosm or, or, a, or a summary of what's happened in, in the church uh, universal throughout the world. You know, started back in the early 50s and then through the 50s and 60s and maybe 70s, you know, experiencing uh, what we might call explosive growth. You know, starting in a little chapel, well, starting even before that, probably in somebody's home and then in a little chapel and then expanding to this beautiful sanctuary. And even during that expansion, these pews were probably mostly filled on most Sundays. And yet we look today and we ask, um, where have those people gone? It's as if as people have passed on or moved on, God hasn't decided to bring new people to, to backfill. We have seen in Northside the birth of a vital body of believers that grew and expanded and had an energy for God until it didn't. And that's not a criticism. It's not a criticism of people that are here today faithfully serving and seeking more for our church. But it is a recognition that there's a question of why. We want answers. We want to know what is it, O oh God, that we need to do to be more vital, to, to have more energy? As we look at the book of Acts, we can see the, the characteristics, the, the, the things, the ideals in the early church that can teach us about being vital and powerful for God. And there's one, one key point that seems sometimes so out of reach and yet it's so accessible to us and that's what we want to talk about today is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives we can start with the not the reading I uh, just read from Acts but the story that Jessica read from Ezekiel because that that also kind of weighs into the story of the church and where we are and then we'll move into the day of Pentecost and see what the answers are about finding revival and renewal in the church but we have to ask ourselves do we care do we really care do we desire to be a part of a church that is on fire for God a church that's vital, a church that's strong. Let's talk about Ezekiel for a minute. In this passage, God takes Ezekiel the prophet to this barren place where obviously something terrible has happened at some time in the past. There must have been a, a horrific battle. Don't really know, but as Ezekiel looks out over this plain, he sees nothing but bones. God takes him there to teach Ezekiel of the things that make a difference to God and his people. 
the things that make a difference was not the place and it was not the government. The thing that made the difference was God. God used this valley full of bones as a lesson to Ezekiel. And we might, as we consider the state of the church today and why we are where we are, we might look around us and see a lot of bones. As I drive here every time I come to the church, I pass a number of small churches, nice churches, and we never see anything going on there. Are they bones of healthy, once healthy churches scattered across the landscape? God brought Ezekiel there for a purpose. Not just to show him what had happened, but to show the possibilities of what can happen. And God wasn't the only force at work there because God spoke to Ezekiel time and time again and he said, Ezekiel, prophesy. Speak to these bones. We might say to ourselves, what's the use? But God didn't say that to Ezekiel. God said, even though it seems dry, even though it seems dead, even though it seems that there is no life here, if you speak, I will honor you. I will bring power here and I will transform this place. When Ezekiel spoke through God's command, the, the bones literally began to organize into human skeletons and eventually take on muscles and skin. But even then, they had form, but they had no life. It was only when God breathed life into those bodies was their vitality. And it reminds us how God's breath, God's voice speaks life into us all. God wanted Ezekiel to see something other than the bones. He wanted to see the, him to see the possibilities. And he asked Ezekiel, he said, can these bones live again? Now, I don't know how we might answer that, but we'd seem, if we didn't understand we were in the presence of God that can do everything just by speaking it into being, we might think that was an impossible task. And maybe that's what Ezekiel thought. His answer was, only you know, Lord. What's to become of the church? God is asking us, can these bones live? And our answer can be, only you know, Lord. Only you know. Ezekiel was stunned by that question. He did not know if or how the bones could live. But God said, you have a role in making them live. God said, Ezekiel, speak to the bones. Don't stop. In other words, don't stop. Don't assume that you shouldn't speak just because they don't seem to be something that you think they should be. God told him to prophesy unto the bones, and God said, and God then would cause them to live. God wanted Ezekiel to know about the possibility in the, in the book of Ezekiel. He wanted God, Ezekiel, to know about the possibility of Israel's restoration, that Israel would come to their land and become a light to the nations again. It's a lesson for us that no situation is too hard for God. God takes lives that are ruined, not by His actions, but by our own sin. And God remakes them into something beautiful, something incredible, something unbelievable. And that possibility for restoration, for new life, awaits every person through Jesus Christ, everyone who pursues God. 
And there was a necessity here. Ezekiel saw the bones organize. He saw an amazing thing that he never would have believed could happen. But at some point, he recognized that there was no breath. They were a body, but there was no breath. There was a body, but there was no spirit. We must ask ourselves in the church, where is the spirit? Are we a body of believers with or without the spirit? Because it wasn't until God breathed his spirit into those bones that they truly had life. In the story, Israel could not restore herself. Human wisdom and strength availed nothing. Only God created the vitality for those bones. Only God can create vitality in our lives. No one can come to life, true life, a truly meaningful life, a truly powerful life, a truly informed life, a truly safe life without the breath of God. God in our lives is what makes all the difference. God wants to live within each of us through his Holy Spirit. And he sent Jesus here to teach us that. And Jesus is a precursor to that Spirit's coming. So we think about that breath of God that we read about in Ezekiel, and then we jump ahead to the day of Pentecost. Why were all these believers together? Why had they, why had they gathered? It says in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Why were they together? They were together because that's what Jesus told them to do. And it's kind of, kind of odd for most of us because we don't like to wait on things to happen. But Jesus told them after he gave them the Great Commission, he said, go to the city and wait you wait for me you wait for me seemed like a very odd first step to create the base to to com, to com, begin that great commission basically telling his believers don't do anything until the holy spirit comes upon you with all of those people on earth waiting to hear the gospel, God told the only ones who knew anything about Jesus to sit and wait until they had sent him, until he had sent them something mysterious from above. That meant don't go out and write books, don't go tell a bunch of stories, don't try to make converts. Just wait. Wait on the Holy Spirit. Waiting is hard. But Christian waiting is a little bit different. Because as we wait, we pray, we worship, and we seek God's Word. Even as we wait, we try to grow closer to God. And the other lesson to learn about this is we really never know how God's going to work. I don't really believe that they expected when they were in that room or as they went to that room that they would see what they saw, experience what they experienced. Just as Ezekiel could hardly have believed that this valley full of nothing but dry bones would turn into a living army again. They went to the room. They were faithful. But what did they expect? What did they expect? What do we expect? 
do we have an expectation that if we wait on Christ, that if we pray that He comes into our lives, that if we open up our hearts, that He will come in a way that we could never imagine at our church, in our lives? We are no, that is no less available to us than it was then. God is still available to do the unexpected for us and often does the unexpected. We pray and pray and ask and seek and want. And then God says, you know what? You've totally missed it. Here's the best way. A violent, a sound like a violent wind filled the room. And people that shouldn't understand each other were talking in different languages in the later part of the story. And yet they all understood one another. No one could have expected that. Tongues of fire became tongues of understanding and for a time completely banished the language barriers of that world. From the very beginning of the Bible, the message is consistent that nothing, nothing can limit the scope of God's word, of this gospel. In that case, not even language. The Holy Spirit will give us understanding, will break open chains and prisons and knock down barriers The power of Jesus' resurrection had come to the church through the Holy Spirit. And God was announcing in this event that there was no more confusion. That all could understand. That all could have power. If they would wait and accept the Holy Spirit. Which leaves us, left them and leaves us with a task. We are to proclaim the meaning and the significance of how God acts in the world. Peter gives a wonderful sermon later in that book. Tells people what they have experienced and what they will experience. And reminds them of the miraculous thing that they've just seen. They've just experienced. And that it was with God's intention in the Old Testament, it aligned with God's intention in the Old Testament that His sons and daughters would someday experience the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm here to tell you today that if you have faith in Christ, that if you give your life to Christ, if you give your life over to this, this one, the Son of God who came down to earth and took up His cross, allowed Himself to be nailed to the cross, allowed His blood to pour out, allowed himself to go through this tremendous and unimaginable suffering all because he loves us to take up, to take upon himself the sins that we that we've committed that come out of our hearts that he had nothing to do with that if we allow all of that to happen then god will bring us a power that we can have in no other way will bring us a life that is available to us in no other way. And that because Jesus died and rose from the grave, God says, go and tell your story. My spirit is in you. When we accept Christ, we feel the presence of God within our hearts in the form of the Holy Spirit. Celtic Christians had a name for the Holy Spirit that might intrigue us. I probably won't say this right because it's the word that they use is a Celtic word. On Giad Gloss. On Giad Gloss. I'll say that's it right there. They called the Holy Spirit the wild goose. I find that kind of ironic because um, when I was a kid back in the 70s anybody here 
have a CB radio back then? Y'all don't even know what that is. So, anybody have a CB? I knew Clay would have one. So, um, I had a CB radio. I don't know. I was in either middle school or high school, but but my handle. What was your handle? The movie man. You didn't want to use your real name for some reason on the CB. You had to have a handle. So he was the movie man. I was the wild goose. Don't know why. I thought that was cool. But anyway. But ancient Celtic Christians said the Holy Spirit was the wild goose. And it hints at the the mysterious nature of the Holy Spirit. Much like a wild goose, the Spirit of God cannot be tracked, cannot be tamed. He has an element of danger and an air of unpredictability about him. And while some might think it's irreligious, sacrilegious to use language like that, maybe we couldn't think of a better description of what it's like to pursue the Spirit's leading through what might amount to a wild goose chase. Maybe they were on to something that we've missed out on as institutionalized Christians, people who've always or mostly grown up in the church, who have a certain mindset and model of what the church should be. Might make us wonder, have we clipped the wings of the goose to be something less, to be something tame, rather than what God intended for the Holy Spirit to be for His people. Are we willing to step out of our comfort zone to let the goose run wild? We certainly are on the threshold of a new day at Northside. In a few more weeks, assuming the vote at General Conference goes a certain way, we will be Northside Church. We will no longer be Northside United Methodist Church. How will God lead us? Will we let God lead us? Or will we just sit back and say, well, that's not the way we've done it before. We wonder whether God is acting in our lives, why we don't seem to have power. Maybe our thinking's too conventional. Maybe we're missing the Holy Spirit. Maybe we feel His presence at times as we've seen healing in this church. We've seen answered prayers. But maybe, just maybe, we need to let the Spirit run wild with us to take us to unexpected places and to take hold of unexpected experiences and to find to find a little bit different expression of our faith in Christ. I pray we will stay close to Him and that we will let the goose, the Holy Spirit, run wild in our lives. Amen. In closing, let's sing the first verse of They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love, hymn 2223 in your black hymnal. Please stand.
last verse of that song, it says, All praise to the Spirit who makes us one. As we go today from, from our worship time, let us know that the Spirit is with us. And let us seek an unexpected place, an unexpected way to be the church of Jesus Christ. Be with us, O oh God, we pray. Amen. Thank you.